What's the deal, my people? You know it is Don Tony Teflon, and the season is over, but the plot leaks keep coming. And in this video, I'm going to go over Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 2, which has some major deaths. Major, major deaths. So spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Now, I don't know if this is real, but me being the book reader, it doesn't bother me one bit. I'm used to knowing things 100% of the time. And I will watch every episode as I did for season one, season two, season three, knowing everything and still be just as excited. So if you're with me, here we go. Scene one. The scene will take place in the Great Hall of Winterfell. Jon, Daenerys, Tyrion, Davos, and Sansa are present here. Gendry and Tormund will tell the rest that the wall has fallen and the Night's Watch destroyed. Tormund also mentions that the Night's King rides an undead dragon and that they are severely fucked. Bran Stark confirms Gendry and Tormund's story and tells them that the Night's King is on his way to Winterfell. Jon Snow tells the rest that they have no time to lose and asks Maester Walken to inform all their banners, everyone in the North, to prepare themselves for the war against the Army of the Dead. They need to prepare for an attack at the battlefield of Winterfell. Scene 2. After having to process a lot of new information and struggling with his identity, Jon Snow goes to the crypts of Winterfell to visit his mother, Lyanna, and his uncle, Ned Stark. Daenerys notices that there is something wrong with Jon and finds him in the crypts. She asks Jon what's wrong with him. Jon tells her that he isn't even Jon Snow. He calls Jon Snow a lie people made him believe all of his life. Daenerys is confused and asks Jon for clarification, but Jon walks away from her. Daenerys notices that Jon behaves aloof towards her. Daenerys walks out the crypts, which Jorah Mormont notices. He asks her what happened down in the crypts, but Daenerys answers she doesn't know what's up with Jon. She tells Jorah that Jon is hiding something from her. Jorah also tells Daenerys that it strikes him that Daenerys has been absent for days. She answers that she's not feeling very well lately. Jorah proposes to have her examined by Maester Wolken. Scene 3 Quyburn enters Cersei's chambers. He mentions she hasn't spoken about a miscarriage anymore and that she needs to take enough time to rest. Cersei answers that there's no time for that and she doesn't want to say any more about the miscarriage. Quyburn leaves her chambers. Cersei watches from a window, witnessing how the snow falls in King's Landing. Scene 4. The next shot is Jaime, riding his horse in snowy conditions. He and Bronn arrive in Riverrun. Both discover that the Tullys are once again laying siege to Riverrun. Jamie enters the stage and meets up with Edmir. Edmir tells Jamie that he should have him in chains, but Jamie responds that he doesn't come to argue about that damn castle. He proposes Edmir to help his niece and nephew in the great war against the Night's King. He also promises to give Edmir Riverrun back to the Tullys, since it doesn't matter any longer who's holding the castle at this point. Edmir tends to agree, not for Jamie, but for his family. Scene 5 Most of House Stark's bannermen and Daenerys' army have now arrived in Winterfell. Among them is Howland Reed. He has arrived with his army and Mere Reed by his side. Arya receives a visitor in Winterfell. He seems to be an ordinary bannerman from House Serwin, but he quickly removes his face. It seems to be Jack and Hagar. Arya is surprised to have Jack in visiting her. Jack and tells Arya that the many-faced god requires another death, a name to be crossed from her list. He reveals it to be the Queen of the Seven Kingdoms, Cersei Lannister. A price was paid. What a better servant of the many-faced god than Arya Stark can kill Cersei Lannister. He gives a vial of poison to Arya and leaves her. Scene 6 Jon Snow seizes the moment to talk with Howland Reed alone. He asks Howland Reed to confirm Bran's story, but Howland doesn't acknowledge this at all. Jon Snow pleads to him to tell him the truth since Robert Baratheon isn't alive any longer. There's no point in lying anymore. Howland ultimately confirms that Ned was carrying Lyanna's child when he came out of the Tower of Joy. He always promised him to keep his secret. Jon thanks him for telling him the truth anyway. Scene 7 Knowing that the army of the dead will be upon them very soon, Tyrion, Jon, Sansa, Arya, Brienne, Podrick, Davos, Tormund, Gendry, Varys, Jorah, Theon, the Hound, Grey Worm, and Sam discuss together with the Stark Benjamin and Daenerys' army how they will defend the North. Allegedly, the last hearth has already been attacked by the White Walkers and their castle destroyed. Ned Umber didn't make it out alive. Tyrion speaks for Daenerys, who is absent due to illness. He comes forward with the plan to defend the North. Tormund, the remaining free folk, the Dothraki, the Unsullied, will attack with Dragonglass from the Dreadfort, since that's where they are heading to first. 
On their way to Winterfell, the dragons will set the army of the dead afire, and the House Stark's bannermen and the Knights of the Vale will fight the weakened forces at the battlefield of Winterfell and hopefully destroy the Night's King as well. Jon wants Brienne and Podrick to take Sansa, Arya, and Bran with them and to leave with Robb and Arryn to the Eyrie. Arya doesn't want to and claims she's stronger than most men. They need her in the war to come. Jon insists that he doesn't want that. Jorah also wants to fight alongside House Mormont, but Lyanna reminds him that he has betrayed his own house. Varys mentioned that he has also received word from King's Landing. Supposedly, Queen Cersei has brought a great army of Sellsword and Euron Greyjoy has taken Storm's End to install them there. Theon pleads to have Storm's End attacked and Gendry agrees since the seat of his father's house. Jon promises Theon that he will help to destroy Euron and save his sister after they have dealt with the Night's King and his army. There's no time for that now since all their lives are in danger, and they have no choice than to face the Night's King and his army. He needs his help and that of the Island Islanders as well during the Battle of Winterfell. A disappointed Theon accepts his proposal. Scene 8 Masandi visits Daenerys in her chambers. Daenerys tells Masandi that Maester Walken examined her and that he confirmed that she's pregnant. Masandi asks why isn't she happy then. Daenerys feels that Jon has changed towards her and she doesn't understand why. Scene 9. The Free Folk, the Dothraki, the Unsullied, prepare to leave Winterfell. Jon asks Daenerys why she didn't attend this important gathering, but Daenerys doesn't reply to him as well. Mira goes to say goodbye to Bran and the gods within Winterfell when Bran starts to behave very strangely. He pleads Mira to warn them since the Night's King army is here. Jon is going to say goodbye to Sansa when Mira runs to warn the others. A huge winter storm comes closer to Winterfell. Chaos erupts. Scene 10. The North and Daenerys' army gather outside to face the Night's King's army. Jon orders Sansa, Arya, and Daenerys to stay inside Winterfell. They are too valuable to lose and promises them that Winterfell will not fall. Varys, Tyrion, Robin, Samuel, Gilly, Lyanna, and Missandei also remain inside Winterfell. Arya first doesn't want to but obeys Jon's wish. Sansa asks Mary to get Bran inside ASAP. A huge flock of whites invade the battlefield of Winterfell. Dothraki face the army of the dead first and many of them are taken out quite easily. Lots of the white walkers keep coming. Ghost fights with Jon and saves him at one point from a white walker trying to kill him. Ghost is killed off trying to save Jon. Inside Winterfell, Daenerys is frustrated that she's not able to help and that she should fly Drogon to destroy the undead. Masandi answered that it's not wise to join the fight while she's pregnant. Sam tries to console Gilly and little Sam. The news surprises Sansa, Tyrion, and Varys. Drogon comes in between and takes out a big chunk of the Night's King army but also kills some northern bannermen in the process. The White Walkers also enter the stage with the Night's King flying undead Viserion above them. Viserion starts to destroy the northern army as well. Lord Glover and Howland Reed die and are killed by dragon fire. Tormund leads the Free Folk and fights but is killed by Drogon's fire. Drogon also manages to kill the undead giant. Mira wants Bran to leave the Guywood, but he tells her he has to help Jon and Co. Bran is trying to control Rhaegar with his mind. Mira warns Bran that it's too dangerous and that he should stay inside. Jon and Daenerys' army is diminishing greatly since the White Walkers keep coming. White Walkers try to invade Winterfell. Grey Worm faces two White Walkers and is able to take one of them out with his spear made of dragonglass. The other White Walker kills him. The White Walkers supposedly try to invade Winterfell to take down Bran. Brienne guards the castle together with Podrick, Jorah, and Gendry. White walkers start to invade there as well. Podrick is killed off by a group of whites, which makes Brienne go psycho and takes out one of the white walkers as well with Oathkeeper. Mira is urging Bran to give up and get inside, but Bran doesn't want to. He wants Mira to leave instead and get safe inside the castle. Mira answers that she will stay with him until the end. Jaime Lance and the Tully forces come to the Northern's aid right in time. Bran is managing to warg inside Rhaegal and the dragon starts to fight undead Viserion, trying to bite him right in the neck but gets gravely injured during the fight as well. Rhaegal starts to breathe fire on Viserion, which seems to make the Night's King start to leave the battlefield on injured Viserion's back. Scene 11 Mira realizes that this is the end for them. White Walkers are coming for Bran and she gets killed off by the White Walkers while defending Bran's body. Viserion and Rhaegal keep fighting each other and both start to be seriously injured. It seems like Dragonfire can harm the Night's King. The White Walkers stab Bran to death which makes Rhaegal fall to the ground and to be stabbed to death by Whites. 
the Night King's army of undead is starting to diminish. We see Jamie commanding his men and start fighting the remaining undead alongside Bronn. John fights alongside the Hound and Davos. The Hound is fighting like a boss at this time. When John starts to notice that the Night's King army is retreating as well as he commands everybody to leave the battlefield ASAP and goes with Davos and the Hound to get everyone safely outside now. The Knights of the Vale, Sansa, Brienne, and Robin leave together to the Eyrie. Arya, the Hound, Jaime Lanza, Bronn, Edmund Tully, Tully, and Lannister Folses retreat to Riverrun. John, Davos, Tyrion, Varys, Masande, Jorah, Samuel, Gilly, Little Sam, Theon, the remaining unsullied Dothraki forces travel south. Lyanna Mormont and her men retreat to Bear Island. Scene 12. The last shot we see is Jon and Daenerys on Drogon's back setting all the dead afire, including dead Rhaegal. Both sides suffer great losses in this fight. And that is the episode, folks, and I told you there were some major deaths, and that includes Grey Worm. Tormund, Podrick, Mira, Bran, Rhaegal, Robert Glover, Howlin' Reed, all dead in this episode. The more I hear about it, the more I believe this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a poll in the cards, and you can answer that in the cards if you want. Do you think this is real, or do you think that is fake? Please use the cards and let me know. And if you like the way I do this, please thumbs up this, please spread this across the realm, and please subscribe. And until next time, you know who it is. Peace! And stay sexy.